So, Charlemagne, another one, another one. Charlemagne was being held accountable by his own callers on his show, and he had no rebuttal whatsoever. He had no rebuttal whatsoever, but he is shilling for this woman, and I don't know what it is. I can't, I can't put my finger on it. Maybe it's because she is a woman. Maybe it's because at some point in her life, uh, she was in a position to be able to use what she got to get what she want, like Diamond from the Players Club. I don't know what it is, but they shilling harder for her than they did for other people and other leaders that was before her. You are never going to get this level of support. Listen, the disrespect that Charlemagne had for Candace Owens on her uh, when she came up to the Breakfast Club in enemy territory is unreal. It's unreal. They don't care. Let me let me help y'all to understand why. And some people said, and I want to go over this, this, this Charlemagne interview. Let me help you to understand why you need to stop being friends with these people because even in a Christian community, we're, to we're told we got to go over there and win souls. I didn't hear that nowhere in the Bible. I didn't hear that I had to go and compete for anybody. All I heard was you spit the word, let the chips land where they may, and people are going to have to have their own relationship with God, which then translates into translates into them having to make an informed decision as to whether or not they want to save or not be saved. I was not told that I had to go and win anything. And so y'all keep going over here in enemy territory. Candace Owens, she went over on the breakfast club and I'm assuming that she got more visibility as a result of it. I don't know where any of it actually benefited her, but she went over there on the breakfast club. And let me just tell you something. It was a zero sum game because they still don't like her. You going over into these places thinking that these people now going to start liking you. They don't like you. They don't like you. What you think that there is supposed to be some level of respect for you. They don't like you. Y'all keep going over in the enemy territory with no objective and no agenda. If it doesn't benefit you in any way, shape or form, you're not going to convince these people who are ultimately paid shields. That's like trying to convince a woman that is in an abusive relationship to leave. She not leaving until she ready to leave. And I learned that from Christianity. I learned that from studying the Bible. And that you can't tell somebody that they have to love God. The only thing you can do is give them the option to do so and educate them, which ultimately is going to be their decision. Because God is to be revealed, not pushed on people. He's to be revealed, which means that in time, everybody is going to have to come and answer for everything that they did. And it's ultimately going to be something that you're going to have to come to the conclusion that this is the best thing for you. Often at times, most people don't even find God until they find themselves at the bottom of the barrel or at their lowest point in life. It's to be revealed to you. And so you going over there trying to shill for these people, all they're going to do is talk about you when you leave behind your back because it don't matter what kind of facts you give them. It don't matter what it is that you tell them. It don't matter how much education you give them. You can tell that woman to leave that abuser, but she not leaving until she fed up, she tired, and she tired of getting fed up. And then ultimately, she going to walk away from the thing that she know was never best for her in the first place. This is Charlemagne on ABC. I want to fast forward it a little bit because it's a, it's a lot of preview stuff. Certainly right about what would happen if Biden debated Donald Trump. Six months later, we talked to him about the state of the race now how Kamala Harris can win and how she could lose. I think it was exactly six months ago we sat down, or just about six months ago, and you said that there was no main character energy with Biden. Nobody was inspired uh, by the Democratic ticket. But what about main now? Main character energy. Oh, there's definitely a lot of main character energy on the Democratic ticket. I mean, that's always been my frustration, you know, from the beginning, right? Because we know who the vice president is. We know who Kamala Harris is. Like, she has... Super main character energy. And I think you, you. What the? F Pardon my English. I'm not going to curse. I was going to curse. I almost lost my mind, but I'm not going to curse because I understand that y'all playing me inside of the office, the churches, the daycares and all of that stuff. So I got you. I got you. Don't worry. I got you. What the freak is main character energy? What in the world are these shills talking about? What the heck is main character energy? She definitely got main character energy. What the heck is main character energy? I need somebody. Look, does, does Kim Jong-un has main, main character energy? Does Putin have main character energy? Just asking a question. 
What do we care about main character energy? Why is this even a conversation? Why is this a thing? Main character energy? I said the race was between the crooks, the cowards, and the couch. Yeah. And you were, the couch, meaning apathy, was going to, yeah, ha had the lead. What about now? Um, I think there's less apathy, mm. but, you know, um, if I'm the mm. Democrats, I'm not spiking the football yet. The job is not done. You know, you still have to bring this thing home. In November, I think that there's a lot of energy. I, people keep calling this the honeymoon phase. I don't think it's a honeymoon phase. I just think people haven't been in it. I swear to God, on everything, on everything I love, I know I ain't supposed to swear to God, but I promise you on everything I love that these people be watching my live streams. On everything that I love, these people be paying attention to, the, to my viral videos. On everything I love, these people take every single talking point. Listen, I'm going to preface this conversation by saying that I looked at the first three and a half minutes of this interview. And everything that he said is things that I was saying verbatim addressing on my platforms. I'm telling you, these people, they listen, they pay attention. I had people that was calling me and was saying, Anton, you got to be careful because you might lose this sponsorship opportunity that might be coming your way because it's some people that's really paying attention to you. They really looking at you. It's some people that's prominent, that's really focused on your flat platform. I'm telling you, these people be listening and stealing y'all talking points and they don't even give you credit for some of the stuff that you be saying. Energized in the Democratic Party in a long time. I think a lot of voters, you know, even if you're not a Democrat, if you're an independent, you know, or undecided person, you haven't been, dis you haven't been energized for something in a long time. The last time we felt energy in a campaign was 2008 when President Barack Obama first ran. These people steal so many talking points. <laughs> and I know it's easy to say, oh, man, you ain't the person that came up with it. Stop it, bro. It ain't about coming up with it. It's about popularizing it. And I literally have used these exact same talking points in the same video. What about the same distance of length in between the talking points itself? And next thing you know, I see these people on these paid organizations, these liberal platforms using the same conversations. When was Charlemagne ever educated or or well spoken enough to be able to articulate himself in this way don't y'all know that most of our leaders is dumb most of our leaders is dumb honest to god they are stupid and the reason that it's easy for you to manipulate uh, for them to be stupid is because it's easy to manipulate them all you got to do is give them some talking points say hi be friends with them, and then they'll love you for life. They're going to go over there, and they're going to shill for you for life. I swear, honest, man. This feels like, whoa. There's, like, real energy. You want to be involved in I mean, that crowd we way. saw, that crowd we saw in Michigan. Absolutely. Was something else. And look at all the new registered voters. <laughs> yeah. Like, they, when people are energized enough to say, hey, I want to go out and register to vote and be a part of this process, that's when you know you got real energy. He's used energy about 16 times so far. And I'm sure that they edited out more. So far, we only two minutes into this video and he's used entered the word energy 16 times. 16 times. Do you know that when they came to Michigan, they didn't even leave the airport hangar? They never even came into any of the cities whatsoever. That they bust people in there. That they're paying influencers. And we're going to get into that in the next part of the show. You see it on the bottom of the screen. They're paying influencers to then come into these communities or people to shill for Kamala Harris because she has no visibility whatsoever. Those protesters continued to shout her down and they held her accountable and they did not agree with her over in Michigan and people over in Michigan was not rocking with her at all, but she had main character energy. She had protesters out in Michigan. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that, otherwise I'm speaking. Is that main character energy to y'all? Is that main character energy, y'all? Well, what did you make of the way she shut them down? I've seen that before. She yeah. shut me down like that. <laughs> yeah. We've seen it on TV when yeah. I had my, my talk show on Comedy Central. She shut me down like that. Now. So who's the real president of this country? Is it Joe Manchin or Joe Biden, Madam Vice President? Come on, Charlemagne. I really, Come on. I, it's Joe Biden. I can't no, tell no, sometimes. No, 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 no. It's Joe Biden, and don't start talking like a Republican about asking whether or not he's president. And that's how she shuts you down behind the scenes as well, if you're having a conversation. And it's not, it's not a shutdown.
It's just to like, listen, Shut respect me. Oh, I'm the yeah. most powerful woman in the world. I want you to listen to me. So uh, you said something when we spoke six months ago. You said Biden should not, no, don't debate. Whatever you do, do not debate Donald Trump. Was that right? Did he... Well, what do you? What do you said? You said that Trump would make him look old and frail. Yeah, I don't know why people didn't see this coming. That was the other frustrating thing. I'm glad that you know they they have a lot of energy in the party now, but they could have done this a year. Maybe we should have a counter for the word energy. I think we should almost have a Charlemagne counter for the word energy. Energy, 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 energy. She got main character energy. They got a lot of energy. Energy taking away the energy. Yeah, Donald Trump energy for Biden energy. Year ago, and they could have avoided all of the backlash they're receiving now, where people are saying, "Oh, there was no primary. The people didn't decide this. This was a a, a coup that the party that the party threw that the party did." It's like, yo, you could have avoided this a year ago because we all saw this way back when. <laughs> Nobody stood up to run against him. I mean, Dean Phillips, but no, no major national because it was figure. all planned. It wasn't a thing. We all know what was going on. It was all planned. This is not even a... Look, man. Fool me once. You can't fool me twice. It was all planned. We knew... Everybody knew. I talked about it way before that on the Millionaire Morning Show when they ultimately even agreed to do this debate in the first place. And I said it. I said, man, listen. The play is for Kamala Harris. Nobody was confused. Shout out to all of my early supporters. Shout out to everybody that was a part of the movement. Before we ever, we got over 4,600 people in here and the likes it, on YouTube alone and the likes is absolutely abysmal. Over 4,600 people in here and the likes is absolutely abysmal. Shout out to the early people that's been rocking with me for a long time when I called it and I said, hey man, the play is for Kamala Harris. 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 This wasn't a surprise. Democratic side... But even hinted about challenging him. Well, they, they should have been having those backroom conversations with him a year ago. Yeah. Actually, they should have been having them four years ago. They should have been like, hey, you're a transitional president. You're here for, you know, a good time, mm -hmm. not a long time. And we are going to set up the future of the Democratic Party. Because they got, they got a fantastic bench, you know, whether it's the vice president, you know, who's, who's currently running, whether it's Governor Josh Shapiro, whether it's Gretchen Whitmer, whether it's... Gretchen Whitmer, the Michigan governor... The get s done governor. I'm the cussingest governor that there is, and Tim Walls might be even more of a cussing governor than me. Wes Moore, you know, whether it's Secretary Buttigieg, they got a great bench. What do you think of the Tim Walls pick? You didn't mention his name just then. Oh, I didn't know him. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just, I just, Most of America didn't yeah, know him. I just found out about him yeah. over the last couple of weeks. Um, at first, I was... A little bit disappointed. Like I knew she, we we knew she needed a DEI hire, right? We know she that she needed. So Tim Walls is the DEI hire absolutely. on this ticket. We know diversity, she, equity. That's the first thing that he said that I absolutely agree with. That's the first thing that he said that I absolutely agree with. Tim Walls is the DEI hire. He fit and check all of the boxes except for the fact that he's a little bit too extreme. Uh, he's a DEI hire. He's formerly in the in the you know served our country, even though he got a little bit of stolen valor. Uh, he was the football coach. He's married. He's a white man, older, got to appeal to a certain demographic. But then at the same time, he put some tampons in some boys' bathrooms, and he's a person that's gender affirming, and he allegedly wanted to switch the flag over in Minnesota, Minnesota to more or less look more similar to the Somali flag because he gave in to immigrants over into his own, his own state. And so I absolutely, that's the only thing that he said that I 100% agree with is that he's a DEI hire. The inclusion. She needed a Ain't white. it crazy now that we've gotten to the point in society where <laughs> white men are DEI hires? <laughs> that's crazy. Yo, have y'all thought about that? White men. I said that on George the Giant Slayer's podcast yesterday and I said, listen. And I, you know me, I'm going to say what I think and I'm going to think what I say. I'm going to keep talking like Kamala Harris usually talk. That I told him yesterday, I said, don't y'all realize that y'all are public enemy number one in America today? Don't you realize that all of America literally hates you? That when you get a position, it's going to be a diversity, equity, and inclusion position 
because you do not check the boxes anymore, buddy. Tim Walls is a DEI hire. That is insane to even think about in my lifetime, that we are so focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion and identity politics that we've come to the point to where we don't hire the best person for the position. We hire the person that fits and checks all of the boxes. It's insane, bro. Male to make America comfortable, it is what it yeah. is. No need for us to, you know, act, act, act crazy about yeah. it. We know yeah. what it is. You, you've known Kamala Harris for, for a while. You know her pretty well. What, what are her politics? Because they're trying to portray her as a, you know, yeah, what are her left, politics? the squad. Hey, hey y'all, Charlemagne is about to, hit, about to hit us with the insight that we've been chasing, the insight that we can't find on her website. The insight that we've been needing in order to really be able to sway over to the moderates and the independents and the people that are on the fence trying to figure out who they're going to vote for. Charlemagne is going to break down for us right here, right now. Right here, right now. He's about to break down for us exactly, exactly what her policies and politics is because of all of this time with her being a senator and district attorney and vice president of the United States of America. We have no clue. It's crazy to think that we don't know where she stands and what her politics are outside of the fact that she continues to lean on abortion because she knows that that's the emotional play in order to get y'all to vote a certain type of way. Charlemagne is going to break it down for us. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? All that. Nah, she's very, she's very moderate. You know, the thing that I like about her and her messaging is very clear, even though she doesn't have it up on her website yet. But the messaging is very clear. You know, she wants to rebuild the middle class. You know, she wants to give every. Her messaging is very clear. When we get to the clarity of the message. Even though don't nobody know what the message is. The message is to rebuild the middle class. How? What policies? What does she stand on? How do you rebuild the middle class when the middle class has been priced out with over 20 plus percent inflation over the last three years? Everybody an opportunity to start a business. She wants to give everybody an opportunity. I can tell you how to start a business. Go on the website, go on your state government website, uh, file for an LLC, or as a matter of fact, you ain't even got to do that. You're already a sole proprietor by default. So all you got to do is go get your tool belt, get your hard hat, and go out there and start soliciting business. Y'all see this? You see this? She wanted, to get, she wanted everybody to start a business. What the f what is going on? To be a homeowner, you know, she's a leader on mental health, right? Like when she uh, launched her first mental health uh, plan when she ran for president, I was with her, you know, in South Carolina. And those are the things that American people care about. D does she no, no, no. Listen, guys, these paid shills and these gatekeepers are so far removed. Do y'all think that these people will be able to stand in front of me? They would never be able to stand in front of me. They would never be able to stand in front of me. Charlemagne on his own couldn't do, couldn't, listen, he did a premiere the other day. He can't get five people into his premiere, 5,000 people into his premiere or his live to save his life. These people cannot stand on their own. They cannot stand in front of you. They can't stand in front of me. They will fold. They will be broken. He can't even list one thing that she stands on from a policy perspective that would actually help Americans. How do you drive down the cost of food? How do you drive down uh, or drive up the, the home ownership rates? How do you get people to not be foreclosed on because they're house poor? How do you put people in a better position in specific counties where they're being laid off? Because let's be clear, and we're going to get into the layoffs shortly, how do you put people in a better position to be able to provide for their family? Why has the cost of having and raising children exponentially exploded? Is that why you guys left the border open? Because we need a new slave class? Because most people won't and can't do these jobs and still be able to afford to live reasonably? Why has the national debt exploded? How do we get that down? 
Why has credit card debt and individual debt exploded? Why are people now that the rent moratorium is up and repossessions are at an all time high? Why are we now getting into the point to where we basically going back to 2008 because they're doing alternatives when it comes to financing homes? That is literally one of the same things that then incentivize people to do the stuff that caused the housing crash and then in the impending recession. It's so many different things that we can have a conversation about, but I, I guarantee you they have nothing. Oh, she want to rebuild the middle class. My 16 year old can come up with something better than that. She need to show some distance between herself and Biden or some Absolutely. different. So how does she do that? Um, by talking about what she's going to do for the next four years. Like, I know that, you know, they want to keep her. Never mind what they did for the last three and a half years. Paired to, you know, the successes that they had while she was vice president. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. You know, the what successes can somebody listen, listen, honest to God, can somebody in here tell me what the successes were? Because I'm I was waiting on them to actually tell me what those were. Listen to what he just said. You know, the successes that they had while she was vice president. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. You know, the, 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 the harp on a couple of those, because a lot of those things, you know, were her idea, like, you know, the cap on the thirty five dollar cap on the insulin, things like that. Diabetes. <laughs> you telling me, are you telling me? With borders open, inflation is out of control, jobs and layoffs, five proxy wars, China is looking to take over Taiwan, infrastructure is failing, bridges is burning down, cops is leaving their jobs and getting killed, communities is completely being ravaged, crime is exploding, Oakland is on the verge of bankruptcy, Chicago is just absolutely done. You telling me in three and a half years... The only thing that y'all can get done is a $35 cap on insulin? In, 30, in three and a half years, the best thing that you can come up with, the first thing that you stand on is a $35 cap on insulin. So that's good to say, hey, I was the person. Now get this dude off my screen i can't do it no more i can't i can't listen i tried i tried i can't i can't do it because these dudes are shills they're 100 shills i had a dream last night i'm not even gonna lie to you guys honestly i had a dream last night you know what happened in my dream this is the honest to god truth on my father's grave you know what happened in my dream they let me interview Kamala Harris because she didn't know who I was with no holes bars. I was able, I, she had to stay there for two hours and answer every question that I had. Every question that I had. And the first thing that I asked her is, okay, so let's start off with, with your background and your history. Why is it that you refused to present the evidence that would ultimately allow this man on death row to be freed even though he was convicted under your administration. What is going on with all of these people that's asking questions about the fact that you withheld uh, evidence that would show that their drug cases or cases with regard to marijuana ultimately should have been dismissed because everything was tampered with in the evidence locker room? Why is it that we still have this audio of you saying that you smoke trees uh, in 1986 when you graduated college to Tupac and Snoop Dogg. You know what? Forget all of that. Let's get into the more serious questions. Uh, do you seriously agree with the fact that we have you on camera being listed as the borders are? Why did you go over to Ghana and, and advocate for the alphabet community over in there and they never wanted that nonsense in the first place? What did you really do inside of the White House? Hmm? And what is your border policy? And why do you think that you need bipartisan agreement, but then at the same time, y'all was suing Texas to not protect their borders? Why was Brandon Johnson, Eric Adams, Mike Johnson over in Denver, and then Karen Bass, and then Andre Dickens down in Atlanta, why do they have a signed letter that was petitioning you for more funds to continue to 
fund this migrant crisis that was coming over into the United States of America. Is that something that you want to you want to comment on? I like I have real questions. I have real questions as to what it is that she did and why y'all think that she's best for y'all communities when she's going to lead y'all down. Why was you over there dancing with Billy Porter on the White House lawn? Listen, this is this is one of the questions that I came up with when I was when I was uh, when I was sleeping. Honest to God, this is one of my questions. Do you believe in God? We need to know. We need to know. Do you believe in a higher power? Do you believe in God? Do you? I need to know why. If if you believe in God, because if you believe in God, then why are you picking a vice president candidate that is gender affirming and is willing to put tampons in boys' bathrooms? Why was you dancing on a White House lawn with Billy Porter? And you're advocating for something that you know is not in the best, best interest, especially when we're dealing with this gender war on masculinity. Listen, if you are, are you pro-black? Are you going to do anything for black people in particular? Ah, thank you. I, I, that's what I wanted to know. Okay, so cool. So do you agree or do you disagree with the idea that you have to be pro-black if you are pro-black or if you really leaning into this whole black thing because you're advocating for black people to ultimately vote for you in, in, in order to be president of the United States of America? Why you marry a white man? What did Montel Williams do to you that ultimately led you into the arms of a white man if you just so happen to be pro-black? Because I'm pro-everybody. I'm pro-go where you appreciate it, not where you tolerate it. However, you wa you raising his kids, you raising white kids, and the black community want to know before they throw their support behind you. I, I got real questions. Honestly, I have real questions that I know that they're paying these influencers to go over to. I'm going to read those super chats shortly. Because they're paying these in, uh, uh, influencers an egregious amount of money to go over to the Democratic National Convention and they're giving them scripts. They're not actually allowing them to ask questions. 